The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera line is changing how we think about low budget cameras. With powerful features and footage quality, you typically only see in high-end cinema cameras. Today, we are going to be doing a full walkthrough of the camera menu and settings in 180 seconds. Wait, in three minutes? No, that, that can't be right. Change, change the title sequence. Let's quickly get started because for some reason we thought that we could do this in three minutes. It's a good one. Now there are a lot of tools in this camera interface that we will be covering in more detail in future episodes. The main purpose of this video is to quickly give you an overview of where everything is, as well as a generalization for what it does. It's interesting to note as we get our first look at this screen that the software interface is actually adapted from the Blackmagic's Ursa Mini Pro. This has to be one of, in my opinion, the cleanest, simplest, and intelligently designed camera interfaces that I've ever used. I mean, when you've primarily just used Sony's super organized interface for years, it really doesn't take much to be impressed. When you first turn on the camera, you are presented with multiple camera options across the top and bottom of the screen. At the top left of the screen, you can access frame markers, zebras, crosshairs, false color, which helps when exposing the camera, and rule of third guides by tapping on the frame icon. Moving on from the first menu, the top of the screen also has options to adjust your frame rate, shutter speed, or angle, your iris, time code, ISO, white balance, and tint adjustment. Moving to the bottom of the screen, you can find familiar settings for the histogram, a record button, storage information, and audio levels. If you tap on the audio levels icon, you can control both left and right audio channels as well as the overall headphone volume. For those of you who know how hard it is to monitor audio on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, you'll really appreciate being able to clearly see your audio levels. Lastly, on this main interface, you can swipe to the right and access some extra metadata settings that can show information like production, title, and director name. Now to access the rest of the settings menu, push the hamburger button on the bottom right of the camera. When you enter this menu, you will be able to select from six different tabs, record, monitor, audio setup, presets, and LUTs. It will automatically open up to the record tab when you open this. Some of the tabs also have additional pages that you can swipe left or right or tap left or right to access. On the first page of the record tab, you have multiple options for changing your resolution, aspect ratio, as well as a new option to film in an anamorphic format and options for shooting formats between B-RAW and ProRes. You can also select the type of compression you want to use on your recorded files. Flipping over to the second page on your record tab, you'll see three options for dynamic range for video, extended video and film, as well as sensor area options, project frame rate, off-speed recording toggles, off-speed frame rate, and your preferred card for recording. Flipping over to the third page, you'll have time-lapse setting options, detail sharpening, and the ability to bake LUTs into footage while recording. Moving on to the monitor tab, you'll see options for your built-in monitor, external video monitor, or both. Clicking on these allows you to edit which on-screen tools you would like to be displayed on different monitors or both of them at the same time. Below this section, you'll find these multiple on-screen tools that include a clean video feed, turning on a 3D LUT, zebra, focus assist, frame guide, grid, safe area guide, and false color toggle. Most of these can also be accessed from the main screen that we showed earlier. Flipping to the second page on the monitor tab, you'll also find options for um, type of grid displays, safe area guide, and an anamorphic de-squeeze toggle feature. On the audio tab, you'll come across source options for both left and right audio channels, levels, gain, and audio monitoring volume. On the second page of the audio tab, you'll find options for headphone volume, speaker volume, adding XLR phantom power to the mini XLR input included in the camera, and options for audio meters. The first page of the setup tab includes settings for date and time, language, shutter angle, or shutter speed toggle, flicker free shutter, an image stabilization on off switch for lenses that support this feature, and time code drop frame toggle. The second page of the setup tab allows you to change the three function buttons on the top of the camera to a variety of custom setups. The third page on the top left includes an option to turn on and off the red light on the front of the camera that lets you know that you're recording. There are also selections for LCD brightness and playback options. On the bottom left, you'll see both the hardware ID and software information displayed. On the fourth page of your settings tab, you'll find your Bluetooth connections options for the Blackmagic camera controller app that we will cover in a separate episode. 
And finally, on the last page of the settings tab, you'll find options for factory resets, remapping, and calibration of the camera. The preset tab does exactly what the title says. It allows you to make presets of the camera settings that you can switch back and forth from while filming. And on the last tab, you can choose the type of LUTs you would like to either bake into your footage while filming or for use as a reference. You can also upload your own custom LUTs into the camera. And that is the full rundown of the BMP CC4K's camera software interface and menu. I'm sure we're way over our 180 seconds that we promised you at the beginning of this video, but we wanted to make sure that we covered everything in this first part of our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera tutorial series. Thanks for watching. If you liked today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Until next time, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager.